Good morning, everybody. As you can hear, the roosters are cock a doodle doing, and today I want to talk to some of the newbies out there who get a little stressed out about how to set up their new baby tortoise. So today, I'm going to run you through a few things that won't break the bank, but will definitely make your tortoises happy. Stay tuned. There are two things I've loved most in this life, bikes and reptiles. Now I crisscross the globe learning about all kinds of incredible animals. Sometimes I know what I'm doing. Other times I'm in over okay, my head. But one thing's for certain, we'll come away a whole lot smarter after every adventure. This is Camp Kennedy. Okay, so you're looking for a new baby tortoise. A lot of people get overwhelmed. They get a little nervous when they take on a new animal. They don't know what to do, how it behaves, and that's on you. You're gonna have to do your research and decide what kind of animal do I want? Do I live up north and have limited space or do I live down south and have a big backyard? Either way, when you get a little baby tortoise like a sulcata here, which is gonna to grow to be well, 180 to 100 pounds in 10 years, you gotta think ahead. But all baby tortoises, whether it's this sulcata or this marginated tortoise from Europe, you gotta take into consideration that tortoises, by and large, pretty much come from two different types of habitats. So you have your drier species, okay? And you also have the more humid loving species or forest species like your redfoot or which I think is one of the coolest tortoises ever, the elongated tortoise. Now these guys are from jungles in Southeast Asia, really forested animals. So basically we're gonna have two totally different setups, uh, but they'll have some of the common things that most baby tortoises need. And the first things baby tortoises need are water, a water dish, I don't care if it's from the desert or if it's from the jungle. You have to provide clean water for these baby tortoises. It's so important. You also need a hiding area and you're gonna need food. Now, the first thing we're looking at here on this side, now this will work for any species of tortoise when they're babies. Think of it as a tortoise nursery. And so many people when I'm at the reptile shows will come up to me and they'll say, well, do we need a terrarium? Should we get a fish tank? And I say, listen guys, turtles, swim in water, they can do okay in a fish tank. Fish really belong in fish tanks. Tortoises, you gotta think solid structure. You gotta think they can't see through it because if a tortoise can see through something, he'll spend his time pacing the glass. If you look at, this is one of my displays right here for the reptile shows. The front of it has a clear plexiglass viewing area so people can see the animals but the rest of it is blacked out i'm just trying not to drive these tortoises crazy as they stay around now you can create something like this for your house i always tell people to build their own tortoise table now you can check out google and just google tortoise table for some ideas and examples of what you can build Guys, I've even taken old bookshelves, turned them on their sides, just made sure the bottom was a little bit more uh, you know, strong in case you put it on substrate and so on, that it doesn't fall through, and you've got yourself a cheap, easy tortoise table. Another thing I like to do is these concrete mixing tubs from your local home improvement center. This is a 21 gallon, $12, concrete mixing tub, and this is a perfect little tortoise nursery. This will get you by for at least six, seven months with your tortoise. Um, you know, this is an easy, low cost thing to do. So we're gonna start from the ground up. Say you've gotten one of these tubs or something similar. It's open air, okay? It's something that's easy. I like it because if you live down south, I always like to tell people, the best thing for your tortoise is that outside sunshine so you can lift it onto a sun porch as long as you have a screened in area to where no predators can get in. As long as you don't let the rain drop on it, they can get some natural sun. You can also pull it in when the weather turns bad or cool. But then the next thing you like to do is you gotta get some substrate. Now I like this Reptibark substrate. This stuff here, it can stay dry or you can make it more moist for some of the moisture loving species or high humidity species like the elongated and redfoot. You can also take organic potting soil and mix this together to create your substrate. It's really great and it's very simple also guys. Look, if you have a drier loving species like the sulcata marginated, star tortoise, leopard tortoise, any of those drier tortoise species, just don't mist it down as heavy and this substrate, this repti bark, stays nice and dry. I also like it because it's not something that I've ever noticed my tortoise is nibbling on, so I don't worry about impaction. And it's clean looking, it's easy to spot clean, so you can pull out poop if it shows up in there. It's very, very simple to keep this animal clean. The next thing you wanna do is you gotta also think of your baby tortoise as a baby. 
they're kind of like little toddlers walking around investigating things they're curious they're basically learning how to get along in life so you have to make sure that your habitat provides for their needs but isn't dangerous for them so many times I'll see little baby tortoises flipping over and that's because they get into trouble like every toddler so you want to make sure that all the little ornaments or things that you've put in here are easy enough for the tourists to get in and out of and one of those is the water dish I use a couple different things I found um, you know you can buy some water dish from manufacturers from pet you know equipment manufacturers that are very shallow very important I've actually lost turtles little baby tortoises as in their water dish they've accidentally flipped over and I didn't notice and I come back and they were drowned so you don't want to fill it up too deep just deep enough that they can put their heads under and drink and then also that they can get in and out of the same thing goes with their food dish but this is a, a terracotta flower pot base again I got this at a hardware store it's very easy to do it's just clay it's a couple of bucks so what you do is these double you can use these as a shallow water dish it's very shallow very easy for the tortoise to get in and out of and I also use them for food dishes because they're kind of rough and the great thing about that is when the baby tortoise is eating his beak will scratch on this surface and that definitely helps the natural erosion of the beak have you ever seen a tortoise with an overgrown beak that's because they're on too soft a substrate they're not being fed on something hard and they get problems by their beak growing too long in some cases we've actually had to take a dremel tool to kind of trim the beak not a pleasant experience for those little guys so with these dry species again leopard tortoise star tortoise your any of your hermans russians greeks sulcatas Egyptian tortoise I'm talking all the tortoises that come from dry areas you can set up just like this I take a light misting I'll do it maybe once or twice a day just give them a very light mist and that kind of replicates dew in the morning uh, again even though these animals are from deserts it's very important that these animals stay hydrated so there's always fresh water they are going to be soaked I like to soak my baby tortoises three times a week you just take the little guy get a plastic shoe box fill it up with a little bit of water you put them on in and just let them soak for 10 minutes or so or until he makes a nice little poop but you'll see a couple of things that people get nervous about when they're first soaking their baby tortoise they, they don't expect certain things and one of them is the tortoise will put its entire head under the water and start drinking I've had so many people email me and say my tortoise is trying to drown itself and I laugh and I go listen I know it looks like that but the tortoise is actually just drinking that's how they drink another thing that startles folks who aren't quite sure or are brand new to turtles and tortoises is they'll see a toothpaste consistency white substance come out of the rear end of the tortoise that's okay that's urates and that means if it comes out in a gooey paste that's fantastic because that means the animal's nice and hydrated if you see the white stuff come out in more of a powder form you know you got to soak your tortoise more because it's holding on to the moisture inside its body it's a really amazing survival adaptation for these more desert dry species of tortoises to retain moisture it's a survival tactic but again we don't want to stress the body of our little tortoise so many times I, I hear people say about sulcatas in particular well they don't need to drink they live in the desert a desert animal's job is to always find water when available so the biggest mistake you can do as a uh, captive rearer of tortoises or desert tortoises is to not provide them water we don't know exactly what they're eating in the wild to be able to sustain themselves we don't have those foods over here in the United States so what you have to do is make sure they have water so you don't get into any kidney problems so that's another very important thing to do for all these dry loving species water 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 should always be available another interesting thing coming along with humidity is when we're talking about baby tortoises they're basically developing right so one of the things that a lot of folks get worried about is pyramiding in tortoises now pyramiding could be caused by diet it could be caused by too fast uh, growth feeding too much there's not enough erosion on the shell there's many different factors one of the big factors that a lot of keepers are starting to realize is when they're young if they don't have a humid hiding area it it tends to make their shells grow a little bit rougher so what we do with every species be it the redfoots elongateds or even your desert species 
is to provide a humid hiding area. So this is sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss can be purchased, again, at any of the big box Home Depot, Lowe's, one of those stores will have them. They come in a cube like this. You can find it in the nursery section. They also call it orchard moss. But you open up the brick, you take some out, you soak it in some water. You see here? You soak it, squeeze out the excess water as much as you can. Squeeze it, squeeze it right out. And it still retains some moisture. You take that and I place it underneath this little hide box. Now you can get a fancy hide box like this. Or another thing, folks, go right out into your backyard. I also take sometimes, this is called a boot. It's a boot of a queen palm, but you may live up north. Just go get a half log or something the tortoise can go under. Put the sphagnum moss under it, lay this on top. Now you have a cool naturalistic little hiding area for your tortoise. Adjust as the animal grows bigger, of course. But anyway, you put it on in there and allow the animal to seek it out. They know what they need. They're going to move into the humid area and nestle in and hide, and that's good for the overall shell growth. Um, so this is a basic setup for a dry species. Now we're going to move over here. I'm going to show you that basically it's the same thing for your more humidity-loving animals. Again, here's a little bitty redfoot tortoise right here. Okay, these guys are from South America. It's very humid in places in South America. Uh, these animals actually come from a very wide range. So they're what I would call an animal that's transitional. They can live in drier grasslands, but they can also live in forest situations. So the little guy here, this little red foot here, he's actually pretty adaptable. But I tell people, yield on the side of more humidity yield on the side of misting these guys down a little bit more. Little spray bottle, go to a dollar store, pick one up, make sure there's never been any chemicals in it, fill it up, and I miss these guys down a few times. Now the elongated and red foot have identical care, but I'm also talking about your four species like mountain tortoise, you can also look at some of the hingeback tortoises. This will work for rearing many of the different tortoise species. Again, like I said at the top of the video, some of these animals are from drier environments, some are from more forest environments. So you have to do your homework. But this is very easy to do. Now check this out. These guys are actually eating a little hibiscus. This right here is my little elongated tortoise. Can't say enough amazing things about this species. They're so fantastic. Very hardy. Do well here in Florida. They can take cooler temperatures and they don't get huge. So it's very important. But look at this. I'm lifting him up and he's having no problem eating this hibiscus leaf. I like to feed my baby tortoises on a plate. Kind of important. It just lessens the impact or the chance of them swallowing something that they shouldn't be swallowing. So we're going to let him finish eating. Over here I did not put a hide box but I took some of the sphagnum moss and I put it in the corner and believe it, these little tortoises are going to go into it and nestle down when they want to be secure or want to get an overall humidity. Another thing you have to watch out for with baby tortoises or I get a lot of calls, my baby tortoise isn't moving a lot. It's not moving. They're secretive when they're young. Because let's face it, when baby tortoises are little, what happens? Most of them get eaten. Any tortoise species, only 1% make it to adulthood. So they're going to feel more secure hiding, finding food, nibbling. They want to grow to be, get that shell very nice and strong. Because right now, when these guys, up until about a year, year and a half old, baby tortoises' shells are very pliable. Okay, So these guys still don't have the calcified shells, which is very important for them to, to get. So you may want to get a product like Reptical and Herptivite and sprinkle that on their food every couple of feedings, so maybe twice a week. Another big thing I do with my tortoises, and people can't believe it, is I actually feed my baby tortoises and my adult tortoises only three times a week. And that's because our food, the food we provide them for the most part, especially folks living up north, is going to be store-bought produce. And that is made for human consumption. So it's loaded with vitamins. These little guys in the wild aren't eating the most amazing foods. They're actually subsisting off weeds and dry leaves and things of that nature. So they're growing a little bit slower and they're amazing 
evolutionary creatures here because their intestines are able, very, very long intestines, and they extract so much of the nutrients out of these really low nutrient rich foods. So you gotta be careful when you're feeding the animals. I touched on a little bit before about pyramiding. If you overfeed, they grow too quick. Internally, they get a lot of internal organ problems. And then also you'll see a lot of pyramiding. Don't freak out so much about pyramiding. If you get a little bit, it's okay. I'm talking about the grossly deformed metabolic bone disease pyramiding that will impact the way they move. It'll impact the internal organs and overall the health will just really suffer. I've seen some really sad uh, tortoises in my day just from improper care. So feed them three times a week. On the weekend, you may want to give them a little extra food. If you can grow some food, that's always important. We've touched on this in many of my videos. I live down here in Florida. I'm kind of lucky. I can grow a little bit of the cactus pad, hibiscus flowers, elephant grass, so on. But if you're doing things up north, you're gonna be buying spring mix, romaine, collard green, yellow squash, shredded carrots. Great for all these species of tortoise. I'm talking the sulcatas, marginateds, all the European testudo species and some of your four species as well. So incredible. You know, you could feed them by and large the same things. However, where it differs as far as diet with your little guy, it differs because the drier species don't come across fruit that often. So I tend to say, you know, I've heard people say no fruit at all, but I'm gonna disagree with that because what was one of the challenges I was talking about earlier? Water, so important. So what I like to do is I will feed a little bit of cantaloupe or watermelon for my baby sulcatas and some of the other dry species because this way I know they're getting some metabolic water in them. Now, for the more forest species, I like to give them about 70% the greens and veggies and then you can do 30% non-citrus fruits. Try it out, see what they like. Um, but again, you don't wanna overdo it with too much of the fruits because it could hurt the internal bacteria that live in some of these tortoises that helps break down cellulose. So this is just a quick overview of how to set up your baby baby tortoise. Don't want to break the bank, go to a local home improvement, get one of these bins, and then you graduate. We're going to be showing you some of the tortoise enclosures that I've created. I love living in South Florida. I know I'm lucky, guys. It's very important. We're talking about sun, UVB. That's the best stuff for these tortoises. But now some of you are going to live up north, right? So if you live up north, you're going to be relying on UVB bulbs and basking bulbs. So how do I get a bulb on something like this? Well, basically, you have to create just some kind of lid. Um, obviously, this one doesn't fit completely over the whole thing, but it fits over this. So what you would do is you would get a heating bulb and put it in one area. And people ask me, well, what wattage should I use? And basically, I say, guys, if you have a tall cage, you're going to need a higher wattage because you want the basking area for all these tortoises to be between 95 and 100 degrees for all these tortoises. They're going to walk into that, they'll raise their temperature and move out. That's a healthy tortoise moving in and out of their thermal gradients, right? So you'd have to get a wattage and a, and a thermometer to measure the temperature. If you can get it to be between 95 and 100 degrees with a 50 watt, you use a 50 watt. If it's going to take 100 watt because you're way up tall, got to get the 100 watt. So then the next thing you want to do also is get the full spectrum strip lamp. And there are so many. ZooMed has some really fantastic products that have all you need in one container or, or one fixture rather. So that would be something I'd look into. Check them out, ZooMed. And then also, um, you know, you want to make sure that you change those light bulbs every six months because it does, the UVB does wear out. Now, again, I live in South Florida. I actually prefer good old fashioned mother nature, the sun, so important. But when you're doing something like this, I mentioned it earlier, make sure these animals have a nice, completely enclosed, predator proof environment. And you'll see some of the ones I've constructed and some I've been very fortunate that uh, the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary has given me some cages that I've retrofitted and made it for baby tortoises. And they really are fantastic because no raccoons, no rats, nothing can get in at them. And I've even put roofs on some of them so that some of the dry species don't get inundated with water. So this is a basic setup, guys. You don't want to break the bank. You want to provide a nice habitat. Um, you can get as crazy and as creative as you want as long as the specific species needs are met. Food, hiding, water, very important. Don't forget the humidity. You want a nice, slow, steady growth for your tortoise. Remember, it's not a race. You don't want to get these things big quick. You want to get them 
big, healthy. So there you have a quick overview. I know I've been rattling on for a while, but I'm just so passionate about growing these little guys up. I'll leave you now with a couple of shots of these guys doing their thing. If you have any questions, you wanna share some of your setups, hey man, put them in the comments below. I'd love to see what you're doing. Make a video, post it, tag me in it. I'll tell you how you're looking. And another thing, folks, You've been asking me, do I sell baby tortoises? I do sell baby tortoises. If you're interested in a price list, go ahead and leave a comment or go to campkennon at gmail.com to find out more and what I have available. Also, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. No, I don't do Twitter. I don't really like Twitter. I do like Instagram. You can find me at Camp Kennan on Instagram. You can also find me on Facebook at Camp Kennan. Ask questions. I'm gonna leave because I need a drink. I've been talking a long time. See you later. Baby tortoises, enjoy.